One of the issues with this drought management that the BLM has imposed is often these very small areas, which people are, are calling postage stamp areas, very, very small, you know, maybe a third of an acre is this total area, is it's dictating grazing management on the rest of the entire allotment. So if they meet a use trigger here, which again, cattle have not even been in here this year, they have to move their cattle from the area, even though there's ample forage in the uplands. So what it means is these very small areas are controlling the grazing on hundreds of thousands of acres of grazing allotments. And it's putting ranchers in a situation to have to go out of business. There's a, a very distinct transition here. So you look at the restrictions being pay, placed on the grazing in the entire allotment because of this riparian area, but literally three or four feet away, we have these grasses that are, you know, three feet high or more. You know, some of these are, are up to my waist. A lot of buildup of fuels. In 14, they called us in in February, all the Argena permittees, and um, said that they, there was gonna be no cattle turned out until maybe fall and falls when we normally come home with cattle. Their reasoning was the drought. And our question to them was, how do you declare a forage drought in February? We don't get rains, it might not grow in here until June. What happened last year is we got some good spring rains. Month of March, we had some really good rains into April and we had grass that grows. With a little bit of rain, you can get a lot of, lot of growth in this country. The ranchers felt the spring forage would allow their cattle to graze the allotment, but the BLM shut down 92,000 acres due to six acres of riparian area that they determined needed rest from use. At the time, we told them the areas aren't that big. We'll fence them off at our expense to protect them. If that, you know, if it's going to be a huge issue, we can do this. And they said, oh no, by the time we do the EAs and the studies and all the hoops and paperwork, It'll, it could be four or five years before you have clearance to do this. It's our understanding that the rancher wanted to fence off the area, but uh, your office wouldn't, wouldn't authorize it. No, um, in, these, in that uh, situation, I think that had to do with, uh, with fencing uh, along a private uh, public boundary. Uh, but we have worked extensively with, these, uh, with the Argena permittees. In fact, we're right now we're underway on uh, developing a number of exclosures around riparian areas. During the conflict over the Argenta allotment, the BLM asked for assistance from a national riparian service team, which was created in 1996 by the BLM, Forest Service, and other government agencies to be a catalyst to bring together all stakeholders and help manage the valuable wetlands on the range. This riparian team, though, has come in and they've looked at several of these areas that we propose fencing as well as several other areas that could or will be an area of contention. Well, their recommendations was fencing. We're looking at doing some riparian exclosures, uh, some water development. That was one of their biggest issues was the lack of infrastructure. And a lot of the development that needs to be done is on federal land. Ranchers have a strong case for demanding water distribution methods and infrastructure as they have the water rights on public land. Grant Gerber, he was an attorney for us. Uh, he organized a grass tour. And what that grass tour was is we invited the general public. We had ranchers from Humboldt, Eureka, Elko, Lander County were all represented. And we had county commissioners from the four counties, as well as state representatives and senators. When we went out on this tour, we wanted to show them that there was actually grass in the allotment and it wasn't in the degraded condition that BLM was making it out to be.